Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, everyone. Could I get your attention, please? Are you ready? Okay, we're going to have our first paper presentation today. Uh, could I get those sitting at the back to fill in the seats in front, please? Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, without waiting further, good morning. Welcome to the third day of International Conference on English Language. We would like to welcome our presenter this morning, Mr. Muhammad Khairi Fakri bin Farid, with his paper, Integrating Grammar Learning and Gamification in Improving Pupils' Mastery of simple present tense, the Get Smart for Group Gamification Triple G. Please welcome Mr. Muhammad Khairi Fakri. Test, test, all right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Test, one, two, three. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all. I am Kairi Fakri. I am from SK Amapulu, Jalabu, Negeri Sembilan. I am one of the representatives for Pinko Schools. Uh, first up, a warm welcome to everyone for coming out here. Uh, a little background on my school. Okay, uh, we are located in the mountainous rural outpost in Jalabu Negeri Sembilan. Uh, we are a small school actually. We are from an SKM school consisting of 113 pupils, uh, from low performing to intermediate performing pupils. And I would like to highlight that we have an indigenous minority in our school, uh, is the indigenous Ora Asli Temuan, uh, about 45% of them. Now, uh, our research sample is taken from 17 pupils in year four Arif, uh, whereas uh, the majority of them are from the Malay race and a minority of them are from the uh, indigenous Ora Asli Temuan. And before I started the intervention, uh, I did a surface level, uh, surface level interview among the research sample, and I found out that uh, the majority of them have, uh, are really familiar with gaming, either in mobile games or PC or PlayStation, about 80% uh, of them. And more than half of them, by 55%, are familiar with the English language. Now, uh, this is the problem statement. Based on my observation, I found out that my pupils are not able to create simple present tense sentences because they lack engaging hands-on practices on transforming these sentences into the simple present tense. So this is where the GGG comes in, okay? Uh, and they provide a very 
engaging hands-on uh, practices on transforming these sentences. Next, uh, here are some of the underpinning theories revolving our study. First up, we got the Bloom's Cognitivism. So these people are required to apply, uh, analyze, evaluate, and creating a course of action. These are the high-order thinking skills based on the Bloom's revised taxonomy in 2001. And we also have uh, Brunner's Constructivism, where learning is an active process, and they have to use whatever they, ha they have uh, learned from the previous lessons to fit in the new task, which is learning the GGG, uh, which is playing the GGG. And we also have Davis' uh, technology acceptance model, where per their, pu uh, their perceived usefulness and also ease of use in using the GGG affects how they play with the game. And lastly, we have communicative language learning, where interaction is the main approach for every step of the process in playing the GGG. Now, um, next one is a little summary on the literature review. Okay, so we found out that uh, Asian English as a second language, or ESL learners, uh, are struggling with the concept of tenses. This is because our mother tongue, uh, our L1, has a different time indicator compared to our target language, the English language. Like, for example, in Malay language, we have prefix and suffixes that indicate time, whereas in the English language, it's a whole uh, complex set of rules. And I would also like to highlight, since we have uh, indigenous learners in our research sample, I would like to highlight the linguistic predicament for our local indigenous learners. Uh, I, from the literature, I found out that uh, these indigenous learners are actually learning the English language as a third language, L3, but they are being put in the same classroom as the learners who are learning it as a second language. And these indigenous learners also have a different learning culture, whereas they are not exposed, uh, most of them are not exposed to literacy until they get into kindergarten or primary school. And this is why we might find some of them have a different learning pace compared to the mainstream learners. And of course, we have a declining literature towards uh, ESL or EFL, English as a foreign language learners, towards learning this target language. And this is the GGG, the Get Smart for Group Gamification. It is actually a very simple game. Okay, I combine the use of the Get Smart for interactive whiteboard CD uh, and, uh, and also the integration of the cooperative grouping. So it's a merge between those two. So it's quite simple, actually. The first step is these pupils, they have to divide themselves into groups. So they have to play rock, paper, scissors there. From the top left there, you can see they're playing rock, paper, scissors to determine which one is team A and which one is team B. And then... They ha and then they interact with the game via the whiteboard. So we have five selection of games in the Get Smart for uh, Interactive Whiteboard CD. So we have, actually, we have Game Arrays, we have uh, Skate Words, we have Ice Cream Game, but for the purpose of this study, I focus mainly on uh, the ones that, that are focusing on uh, simple present tense. And then when they interacted with the, the, with the game, they have to do everything in a, in a group, as a group, okay? So it's actually a pretty collaborative and cooperative where they have to uh, get an agreement between each other, they have to analyze the question that they have selected, and then they have to evaluate which, uh, which uh, options that they, they have, and then they have to create a course of action. All of this happening as a group. So that analyze, evaluate, and create, those are the high order thinking skills. And at the same time, it, is, uh, it became something pretty collaborative and communicative. Okay. And lastly, as you can see from the bottom right there, the winning team is the one who got the, the most score. All right. I had uh, three types of data for this study. The first one is the pre-test and post-test. And then we have the uh, qualitative data of observation notes. 
and focus group interview where I got their feedback on using the intervention. So this is the data from the pre and post test. So as you can see uh, in research, we calculate the central of tendency. So if you look, sorry, if you look at the mean score for the pretest, on average, most of them scored 5.29, but after the use of the, D, the, GG, the GGG, um, they, the mean score for the post-test was 11.94. This means that on average, these pupils have performed two times better than before they played the GGG. Next one, of course, in research, we have to calculate the normality of the data. So since the research sample is less than 50, I used the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, and I found out that uh, we had the value of 0 0.108 and 0 0.152, and this means that um, the data is of normal distribution. And of course, I calculated the PET sample t-test, where I found out that uh, the t-value was uh, negative 10.458. This means that the HO or the null hypothesis is rejected, and the HA, the alternative hypothesis, is accepted. This means that the differences between the mean scores of the both groups are statistically significant. And also, I calculated the effect size. Since the standard deviation for both groups are different, so I had to use glasses delta effect size. So I found out that the value for the effect size of the intervention is 1.203. And since this value is higher than 0 0.8, uh, this means that the GGG has a very big effect size. So I would love to see it if we have a larger sample size. And the quality, uh, qualitative data from the observation notes shows that uh, the majority of them uh, showed a high to extremely high well-being in the classroom. And also, uh, the, majority of, uh, the majority of them by 66% showed high engagement while playing the game. And this is a summary of the impact of the GGG. Like I said just now, the center of the tendency is like two times higher. So uh, in, in a summary, uh, the GGG has increased the students' performance by 225%. That is quite an incredible feat. And the majority of them by 78% displayed positive body language and uh, facial expressions, while more than, 50, uh, more than half of them by 66% showed high engagement while playing the game. And this is the data from the focus group interview. So I found out that all of them by 100% like playing the game and more than half of them by 57% think that they learn better when playing the game and the majority of them by 89% would love to play the game again. And here are some quotes from some of the respondents. As you can see, respondent seven said, can we go again? I love this. And respondent 10 and 2, they are from the indigenous uh, Orang Asli Temuan. They say that we want more games like this. This showed that uh, the majority of them really enjoyed playing the game and are very engaged in playing the game. And respondent 15, this is the most interesting one. Respondent uh, 15 said that, uh, I didn't know I can do that. So this is the most interesting uh, quote I got because he was referring to the time where he was able to uh, transform sentences into simple present tense when playing the game. So that is quite a surprise to him. Now, since we have an indigenous, uh, indigenous learners as some of our, our research sample, I would like to highlight uh, the data we got from the indigenous learners because um, I found out that the literature on indigenous, our local indigenous learners in learning the English language, uh, the literature gap is quite large. So I hope this study would contribute to the literature gap there. Now, 
as we know that uh, these indigenous learners have a different learning culture, they feel isolated compared to uh, the, every, the atmosphere at school, the learning culture at school feels isolated compared to home, and they are also learning it as a third language. So let's see at the, uh, let's look at the pre and post test result for the indigenous learners. Now, if you look at the mean score there, uh, and you look at the bar graph, they did not score that high, but that's, that's why we got the mean score. The mean score showed that on average, these pupils scored 2.125 before the intervention, and after using the GGG, they scored 8.0. That is actually four times higher than what they have performed before using the GGG. Quite an incredible feat compared to the disadvantages uh, literature I found in the literature, literature review. And the qualitative data from the observation notes showed that the majority of them have high to extremely high well-being in the classroom and by 62.5% showed high engagement in playing the GGG. And a little summary on the impact on indigenous learners. Like I said just now, the central of tendency increased by four times. So the GGG has increased the pupils' post-test performance by 377%. And the majority of 89, sorry, 65% displayed positive uh, body language and facial expression, and 62.5% showed high engagement in playing the game. This may be because uh, one of the indigenous pedagogy said that uh, the element of play and visuals really impacted uh, these indigenous learners. And here are some suggestions for future studies. So I suggested for the next cycle, according to the to the chemists and metagets action research model. Perhaps I could use uh, purposive sampling where I would dive deeper on using the indigenous learners as an exclusive research sample. Or perhaps I could have a control group or exper experimental group to see the effectiveness of the GGG. And perhaps I could have a sample size that is higher than 50. Because just now we had like 17 uh, research sample and the effect size was pretty high. I would love to see the effect size for a larger research sample. And perhaps in data collection, I could add in questionnaires based on the technology acceptance model or a, a very detailed diagnostics on the learner's familiarity with technological gadgets and gaming as contributing factors to the findings. And that is all from me. I am Kai Fakri. Do we have any questions? No? Thank you for the presentation, uh, Mr. Khairi. Yes, we would like to ask the floor for any questions. Any questions? Okay, one, yes, please come forward. Such a long walk. It's a big room. Yeah. Hello? Hi, Ms. Hello, Mr. Kairi. Hi. Uh, can you share what do you do uh, in the GGG? Like what um, exactly, what, how, is, how does the game go on and so on? All right. Thank you so much for the question. Okay. How does this work? Uh, I'm supposed to... Uh, I can't go back. Oh, yeah. So it's actually, um, like I said just now, thank you so much for the question. It's a very simple game. Uh, perhaps some schools, they have the Get Smart 4 interactive whiteboard CD game. Uh, if you got it, you'll know that you have the five selections of games there. So they have the game arrays. It's actually it's a game that is integrated uh, on the screen. So they have to interact with the screen over there. And what I did was is that I used that uh, element of gaming and combine it with group, uh, cooperative group. So they are doing everything as a group. 
So I'm making it very communicative and interactive uh, between each other. So yeah, I hope, did I answer your question? Okay, thank you. Okay, I hope that answers the question posed. Uh, any other question? Okay, uh, with that, I think we would like to thank Mr. Khairi for a well-presented presentation this morning. Thank you so much, Encik Khairi. Okay, we're going to move forward.